Photography can be referred to as an infinite pursuit, meaning from the first time you pick up a camera until the last time, you can always learn something new about this craft. Today, we're talking about the phases we all go through on this photography journey. You can see what is good. Today's video is a little bit more on the fun side. It's a little more lighthearted. We're talking about the phases of our photography journey. Now, this is completely based on my anecdotal experience over the last 10 years of doing photography, what I've witnessed online with colleagues, with friends, with family members as they get into photography. We all go through a similar trajectory and a similar pattern to our journey. Now, granted, this journey has no timeline. Everyone's is different. There's no right or wrong way to do it, but we do all go through kind of a similar roadmap, I guess you could say. So if at any point in the video you say, yo, I'm there, or yo, I remember that, feel free to drop it in the comments. And if I happen to leave something off this list, which I don't think I am, feel free to let me know in the comments as well. But let's not waste too much time on this intro. Let's get into it. These are what I think are the eight major phases that we all go through on this photography journey. First phase is what I like to call the mistaken savant phase. Mozart wrote 10 symphonies by the time he was 12 years old, and you are just as good as Mozart because you made this fire black and white, slightly tilted photo of a railroad track. Now this overconfidence is pretty much normal for any beginner. You pick up a camera, it's exciting, and you're mistaking the excitement of being able to essentially instantly create something with actual skill. Now phase two is the watermark phase. You gotta protect this amazing sepia mailbox photo you made from potential photo thieves, because let's face it, this could be a UPS ad. Phase three is the wow, I'm terrible phase. I have a lot to learn phase. And this is typically when people end up on YouTube finding channels like mine, finding other channels and realizing, oh my gosh, there's so much I can possibly learn with photography. It's like a great awakening. Now, real quick, before we keep going on this list, I wanna take a second to thank the sponsor on today's video, Squarespace. Squarespace has always been a very important part of my business from being able to contact clients to setting up a portfolio to being able to sell products on my site like my last photo book to achieve passive income all these things I have videos about on this channel, I'll link them down below. You can actually see how I built a portfolio and built the site. But Squarespace is about to become an even more important part of my business as I launch a secret project that I've been working on on September 4th. If you're listening to this right now, you're getting a sneak peek on a new collection of merch and it's all thanks to Squarespace providing the tools necessary to sell these products online. Now this new project is gonna be available on my current website, evanramp.com, but eventually I wanna create a new website for this project and I'm gonna use Squarespace once again because of how easy they make it with drag and drop templates. So no matter what you're trying to do, if you wanna share it with the world, Squarespace is the way to do it. It's what I recommend. They make it easy and they make it seamless. And if you have any questions along the way, they are known for their award-winning customer service so you can contact them and get any of your questions answered. So thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring the video. Head over to squarespace.com slash Evan to start a free trial today and use code Evan Ramp to get 10% off your first purchase. That's squarespace.com slash Evan to start a free trial today and use code Evan Ramp to get 10% off your first purchase. Be on the lookout for that special project that I talked about coming out on September 4th. Y'all will know more about that. I'll talk about it more in coming up videos. Let's get back to this list. Now, naturally, phase four is overusing all these new techniques that you just learned online. These crazy HDR photos that we've all made, insanely oversaturated images that look like a clown house, making photos that are all bokeh, thinking to yourself, wow, this is so abstract, like you're a modern day Jackson Pollock or something. It happens to everybody. Now eventually all this stuff settles down and you enter phase five, which is the something is missing from my photography phase. Now we all reach this phase at a different point, but essentially what happens is we all have photographers that we look up to. We see their work and we say, why is their work so much better than mine? And we start to extrapolate this question and we go back into another learning phase and start to figure out what it is that makes great photographers great. Phase six is technical application. This happens when you take all the information you learn in phase Phase five and realize how it applies to your photography in the field and you begin to get the result that you want through things like composition, settings, light. Paying attention to the pieces of photography that really matter, the technical elements. This is when most people get obsessed with photography because they realize how much of a craft this is, how much control you have over the potential outcome of the art you're creating. It's like peeling back layers to the onion. This is when you realize that photography is something that you can pursue forever and eventually you reach phase seven, which is the humbled photographer stage. At this point, you realize how difficult this craft is. You've been doing it for a long time. You have all the skills that you thought you had in phase one. But at this point, when someone comes up to you, when you have your camera out and asks, are you a professional photographer? 
you'll probably respond with something like, eh, kinda, it's just sort of something I do for fun. You just end up downplaying your skills out of respect for all the masters who came before you because you realize how difficult of a pursuit this actually is. And then we get into phase eight, which is the repeating phase of being a photographer. This phase of inspiration, learning, and application just repeats over and over. Each time the cycle repeats itself, you're back to being a novice and you're back to being able to learn something new about this craft. And until you decide that you're done, you can technically never be done with being a photographer. And personally for me, that is my favorite element of this entire thing. So there we go, that is the eight phases of photography, or at least that's the eight phases how I see it. To this day, I remember when I picked up my very first camera, it was a Nikon D3100. I thought every photo I made was so dope. I'd have it in black and white mode, I'd go into the living room, I'd make photos of like the lights, I'd make photos of just some flower, and I just thought, oh, because this is black and white, it's amazing, which, I don't know, maybe looking back on it, it actually is amazing because I'm sitting here laughing about it and I'm enjoying it, which is what photography is all about. But if you have any anecdotes like that, you have any funny stories, feel free to let me know in the comments. What's the most ridiculous photo you ever put a watermark on? That is something I'm interested in hearing from me. I think the most ridiculous one was I used to take photos and I pixelate them and then I'd put like a watermark on this pixelated photo. Like who's gonna steal this? This is not fine art or anything crazy like that. Photography journey is one that's meant to be enjoyed. It was definitely fun looking back on some of those memories and thinking about them as I was putting this video together. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.